On today's program, Adventist schools in India helping children prepare for a better future and global mission pioneers in the African nation of Botswana. All that and much more coming up next on Global Mission Snapshots. Just before he went up to heaven, Jesus gave us a command. He gave us a mission. Jesus said, go. Go unto all the world, telling them of his love. This is our mission. This is our global mission. Hello, I'm Gary Krauss and welcome to Global Mission Snapshots, a program where we look at what's happening with Adventist mission here and around the world. In recent years, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has increasingly focused on mission to the cities. According to the Global Health Observatory, a hundred years ago, two out of every ten people lived in urban areas. Today, it's more than five out of ten, and in a few years, the vast majority of human beings will be living in cities. Today we'll be talking with Dr. Gaspar Colon from Washington Adventist University and the Center for Metropolitan Ministry. We'll also be talking with Wes Vai, who is leading Simplicity, an urban outreach project in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Before we meet our guests, several years ago, the Seventh-day Adventist Church chose several major cities for special prayer and holistic outreach. Let's join Gerson Santos, who is the director of the Global Mission Urban Center, as he introduces us to some of those cities. Mission to the Cities. This is probably the most important initiative the Seventh-day Adventist Church ever had. About 200 years ago, just 3% of the world population was living in the cities. Now we have more than half of the people in the world living in urban areas. In a couple of decades, we're going to have three quarters of the whole population of the world living in those major cities. The Seventh-day Adventist Church decided to reach out to those urban areas. In each division around the world, one city was selected, and all over the world we have about 600 major cities that will be reached in a couple of years. Let's see some of those most challenging cities around the world. One of the mission to the city's urban areas is Lagos, Nigeria. A port city, Lagos is located on the southern coast of Nigeria, the largest city in the country and one of the largest on the continent of Africa. Lagos has an estimated population of 13 million people. The economic success of the city is attracting more people all the time and Lagos continues to grow rapidly. Some place the population as high as 21 million. Yet, here, in one of the largest urban areas of the world, there are just about 100 Adventist churches in the city and only about 12,000 Adventist believers. We know that God is here and God will give us the means and the ways and the courage and the wisdom about how to come about the whole, the, the whole program and we are sure that uh, by the end of this year and uh, the, uh, the years after, we will witness some miracles in this city because we want Lagos to be one for Christ Jesus. Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic, is also its largest city. Founded in the 9th century, Today, Prague is a mix of modern and historical. Although there are more than 1.4 million inhabitants in this city, you will find less than 10 Seventh-day Adventist churches and only about 700 Adventist members. That's a fraction of 1%. One of the challenges for the church is to create a strategy of evangelistic work in the cities, which will focus on the context in which people live, where their needs are, where their injuries are, and where they need help. 
Let's go across the ocean and look to another challenging urban area. Built on the ruins of an Aztec city and what was once a lake, Mexico City has grown rapidly and it's said that the city's population doubled between 1930 and 1950. Today, Mexico City is one of the world's largest cities with a greater metro population of 23.6 million people. There are nearly 54,000 Seventh-day Adventists and more than 200 churches. That's still less than a quarter of 1% of the population. The city of Kinshasa is the capital of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Here, Adventists are using unique ways, such as street music, to reach people and their community. Kinshasa has a population that is approaching 10 million people. There are about 8,000 Adventists and nearly 70 churches, less than 0.1%. My guest is Dr. Gaspar Colon from Washington Adventist University. Dr. Colon is also the director of the Center for Metropolitan Ministry. Welcome, Gaspar. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're here because mission to the cities is such an important mission challenge that we're facing today, and I know it's been a passion of yours for many years. How did that start? Actually, it is something which uh, starts with experiencing something and then later I as the years go by learning about it from books and other people who have experienced it also. Back in 1971 when uh, I was just one year from graduating from college I had met a young lady and we were had courted and we were engaged and and uh, we were called as uh, a collegiate task force couple to work in Times Square in New York City. Mm. And so we went to the New York Center, which was right there on 46th Street uh, in the Times Square area in the theater district. And we were uh, tasked with meeting the needs of a uh, community that is right there in Times Square, a residential community. And so uh, we did everything that we could to get acquainted with the area. We um, decided that we would provide them with some of the programs that, we, that, that were very popular at the time, stop smoking clinics, weight control programs, and things of that nature. And so we, um, we talked to a few people, but uh, we had already decided what we wanted to do. And so we, we uh, printed up flyers, we, we went into the, into the residential community, we handed these out, we put them on, st on, on store windows, and um, uh, eagerly anticipating large crowds of people to come, and uh, nobody came. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we were just surprised because we had talked to so many people who said, yes, I, I would come, but nobody came. And as, as we began to analyze this, we figured, well, we'd better go back in the community and discover from the people why they weren't coming. I mean, where we were was only a half a block away from 8th Avenue, and the residential community was on the other side of 8th Avenue. They wouldn't walk a across and into the theater district. And when we asked, they said, we don't go there. And we said, but it's just, I mean, we can see it from here. We don't go there. Huh. And um, as, as we looked at what we were doing, we figured we're not going to be able to reach these people from that section of right. town. We have to move into the community. And so we relocated the ministry by, by looking for and finding a place where we could do the work that we were called to do. So they were basically saying that's an area that tourists may go to, but it's not for us. That's right. There are no grocery stores there. It's all fast foods and, and, and high-class restaurants and theaters, and we have, we have nothing to do there. So this is something that I've heard you emphasize many, many times, that you have to understand the community because it has its own rhythms, it has its own ways of doing things. That's right. And too often we, th we think we know what they need and mm -hmm. we bring it in, right? That's right. 
That's so what did you do? You, you, you obviously started a, you moved across to the right place, and mm. then what did you do? Well, what we did is we looked around, we found this storefront uh, between a former church that we later found out was a discotheque and uh, a Chinese laundry, and it was maybe nine or ten feet wide and thirty feet deep, and, and it was, um, it was sufficient. We carpeted it, and we wanted to set it up. At the same time, while we were doing that, we were visiting the schools and offering the health teachers and the science teachers uh, to help the kids understand about smoking and, and health issues and drugs. And so we came in uh, with, with uh, little talks for the third, fourth, fifth graders, and then um, in the middle school also we went in. They used to be called junior high schools back then in New York City. And uh, we got acquainted with all the children in the community who were going to school in that, in that area. That opened the way for us to get to know the parents because as we went around visiting uh, the, the neighborhood and talking to people, it, uh, it just began to become very family-like. Mm. And, and we were very much in tune with what was happening in that community. Then, of course, we wanted to kick off the, the inauguration of our, of our community center, and we needed to put up a sign. And, uh, and in those days, uh, bubble uh, letters were in. And so we got this, this thick styrofoam, and we were going to do the, the shaping of the letters, the open door. And, um, and so, but we didn't want to do it inside of the, of the center. So we figured we'll go down to a playground down the street and get that done. And as we did that, there were some kids that were playing basketball, and one of them came over and said, what are you doing? And we, we said, well, we're putting together a sign for our community center down the street. And he said, well, can I help? And so he started helping, and we gave him the tools, and he started shaping the letter. And one of his friends came. And when his friend asked, he said, well, we're we're building a sign for our new community center down <laughs> the street. And so, and so immediately, it just seems like they, they, they were wanting this so much, this became their project as well as our project. And that's how a ministry with Pathfinders and Stop Smoking programs and people would come. And it was a busy place in town because they were feeling that they owned this place as a place where they could come after school, hang out, do things, and, uh, and have their parents involved also in, in the programs. Thank you, Gaspar, for reminding us of the first step in urban mission, and that is to be understand and become one with the community. Our viewers at home, if you want to learn more about Urban Mission, just go to missiontothecities.org. And we also have a, a reminder for you of Mission 360 magazine, full of mission stories from all around the world, including urban mission stories. You can go to mission360mag.org, and there you can read it online, or you can get an app for your uh, various types of readers from Kindles through to whatever. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Colon. Thank you. May God bless you. My guest is Wes Vai, who is from Allentown, Pennsylvania, where he is directing the Simplicity Ministry. Wes, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Gary. Simplicity, what does that stand for? Well, Simplicity really kind of embodies our approach to ministry. We're an urban mission project, and so um, we're working in the cities, and, and we really like to keep things very simple. Uh, our approach is, is, is really, we've cut out all the, the trimmings and just try to connect to people in whatever way we can. And that's kind of our mantra in our mind is just connect to the people as simply as possible. Wonderful. Now, I said you're from Allentown, but that's uh -huh. where you're working as a missionary. Yes. Now, are you working alone? Uh, no, I actually have a team with me. Um, there are six young adults that have volunteered. One of them is actually from Mexico, the other from here in the States. Uh, they spend their days uh, in the community volunteering. Uh, with us, connecting, doing Bible studies, um, planning programs for children, and all kinds of things. 
So are you operating out of a church building or how are you connecting with the community? We're actually um, working off of a model using a center of influence and so we've actually rented a space uh, in the center city that we use as kind of a community center and we use that as the way to to kind of make our presence known and kind of connect there. We have programs and we help people look for jobs and and uh, if they need food they come by. Uh, just anything we can do in the community there. So you're like a social welfare agency? Oh, not at all. You know, one of the things we really strive very, very hard to do is is make sure that in every interaction we have, we're looking for that opportunity to share Christ. It's really about expressing uh, the love of God through action so that we can have an opportunity to tell the love of God uh, to an open heart. It's really using Christ's method of ministry um, in its purest form. Okay, I'll come back to that, mm -hmm. but why didn't you just come in and, s and preach to the people? <laughs> um, you know, the honest truth is, is, is now that we've been on the ground for about two years, um, what we've learned is, is that they wouldn't have listened. Um, <laughs> That's a minor it's problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to, to connect in this, in this urban setting. There's so many cares of life and so many things pulling their attention that uh, connecting and getting them to come to us has been a challenge. It's taken a long time for us to develop just the, the interaction that we have in our center. It's mostly been about going to people, knocking on their doors, letting them know we're here to be their friends, um, and, and gaining that trust. Uh, so that we can share with them and, and, and building that relationship up. And that's, that's so important uh, in, in working in the cities. So Wes, uh, how did you discover what the needs of the community were? I mean, did you have mm -hmm. a list of things, this is what we're going to do? How did you arise, uh, mm -hmm. how did you arrive at your ministries? Um, our, our, the foundation work for Urban Ministries, as it says in the Spirit of Prophecy, is the door-to-door -door work. Um, and so we started out simply just going door to door. We covered the whole city. We didn't know exactly where our center was going to be, so we just knocked on every door. And what did you uh, say? Uh, we told them a little bit about simplicity, that we're here, we're, we're looking for ways that we can serve the needs of the community and ask for their feedback. And uh, we had some open-ended questions where they could tell us about the safety of the neighborhood, uh, some of the challenges they face in their daily life. And then we had a list of, of different programs or, or things that we, would, we thought we could offer to the community and let them tell us what they'd be interested in. From that, then we went back and we developed, uh, you know, the programs that we do offer, which is uh, some children's programs, both after school and a Sabbath morning program that we do for children, uh, job search assistance, uh, cooking classes. We now have uh, the option for people to have in-home lifestyle coaching uh, and a number of other things. So how, how do you make those contacts that will, 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 will last longer than I'm, I'm handing you some food or something mm -hmm. along. I mean, how do you build those bridges to make a long-term contact? Yeah, well, there's one story I can tell you that'll really illustrate how it works. Um, one day we randomly got uh, several boxes of bread uh, from a local grocery store. We weren't expecting it, we didn't know what to do with it, so we said, okay, we'll put a table out on the sidewalk and we'll just put a sign out there, free bread, and we'll stand out there, we'll talk to people as they come by. And uh, as we were out there that afternoon, a lady came by and she just looked distressed. And so the missionary said, you know, what's going on? And, you know, is there anything that I, it, that I can pray with you about? Uh, and that really made an impact on, on that lady. And she said, you know what, yeah. And, and so she let her pray for her. They came, she offered to, you know, invited her into the center. She came in, they talked for a little bit. And that started a relationship that's been going now for about four months. Mm. And, uh, and they pray together, they visit together. This lady now is, has come and she volunteers. She always has a folder with simplicity materials to pass out. Um, and, and the thing is, is, is she's actually a Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, but but that, that offer of prayer, that concern has allowed us to connect with her in a very deep way. Yeah. Um, she's even uh, accepted some literature and is reading uh, Ministry of Healing because she wants to volunteer with us. So you need to read this book if you're gonna volunteer with us. Right. And so um, that personal concern uh, looking for the opportunity to minister in a spiritual way uh, to, to what someone's going through in that moment uh, opens up many doors in their life. Just in 30 seconds, uh -huh. how, how has it changed the lives of the, the young people working with you? Well, you know, when we came in, our missionaries were supposed to come for one year. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sacrifice for them to be there. What we find is most of them don't want to leave. In fact, uh -huh. we have some of them that stay without, without any income. They uh -huh. just want to stay and be part of it. Um, and it's, it's revolutionizing their perspective on what ministry can be and the impact that it can have in someone's life. Well, that's fantastic. How, how can people find out more about Simplicity? Uh, we have a blog that's up at simplicitymissions.org where we're giving resources and stories and, and all kinds of information. Fantastic. So
Thanks so much for joining yeah, us. Thank you. Our viewers at home, uh, please pray for Simplicity Ministries, pray for Wes and his team, and pray for urban mission around the world. And just a reminder, if you want to learn more about mission, you can go to adventistmission.org and you can look up uh, Mission 360 magazine or you can even just go to mission360mag.org. Here you'll find mission stories around the world, including urban mission stories. Um, please remember that God is interested in people. He loves people. And now we're going to go back to Gerson Santos as we continue meeting the cities. In addition to being the capital of Russia, Moscow is also a showcase for Russian culture, known for its museums and theaters. One of the most recognizable buildings in the world, St. Basil's Basilica dominates the view over Red Square, which is itself a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Moscow has a population of more than 16 million people. Adventists number less than 3,000, about 0.02% of the population worshipping in 15 churches. Not far from here, we have another city. The capital and largest city in Ukraine, Kiev was named after its founder. A bustling city, Kiev is home to world-class art and architecture. There are some 3.2 million people living in Kiev, and just over 4,000 are Adventists. The capital of Angola, Luanda, was founded in the late 1500s by the Portuguese. Located on the Atlantic coast of Angola, Luanda has been rebuilding after years of civil war. Today, Luanda has a population of some 6 million people, with about 74,000 Adventists and more than 270 churches, about one and one quarter percent of the city's population. We have a great challenge in the large city of Luanda, which is the capital of Angola. Because this is a city that is growing each day, it's growing in material things as well as in number of people. It's a city coming from the ruins of war, and everything is rapidly expanding. As everything grows, our challenge to reach people who don't know God also grows. Sydney, Australia, is said to be one of the most visited cities in the world, attracting visitors from all over. One of the deepest harbors in the world, it is known for the Sydney Harbour Bridge and iconic sails of the Opera House. Sydney has a population of 4.7 million people, with about 9,000 Adventists worshipping in 85 churches and companies. Let's jump to the other side of the world. Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina, is said to be the second largest metropolitan area in South America. First settled in the 1500s, today, Greater Buenos Aires has a population of some 14.5 million people. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has been growing here, with more than 160 churches and more than 22,000 members. Yet, that's still less than 0.2% of the population. The main objective is to church plant in a place where the people are not receptive. I believe that we would not have reached the people here if it were not in this manner, through the center of influence, showing sympathy, meeting needs, and winning confidence. The objective for the future is that the center of influence will be self-sustained and that it will make other churches London is well known for its familiar sights and charm. This city is made up of 13.3 million people, making it one of the largest cities in Europe. The growing challenge of secularism makes reaching the people difficult. Among the millions of people who walk the streets, only 15,000 Adventists live in this European city. Home to some of the world's most populated cities, India is familiar with the urban landscape. The Mumbai metro region, formerly known as Bombay, is one of the largest metropolitan areas in India with a population of 21.2 million people. In this area, there are about 11,000 Seventh-day Adventist members. This 
only scratches the surface of the total population. The challenges of prominent world religions are apparent in this region of the world. It is amazing to see all those uh, challenging urban areas all over the world. And I ask you, pray for those cities. What a beautiful thing it would be to see the gospel reaching out all those urban areas. Pray for the Lord so he can send workers. We can find ways to reach out those urban areas. If you want to learn more about this initiative, just go to the website missiontothecities.org and pray for the large cities of the world. Thank you, Gerson, for sharing the challenges and the opportunities in some of the largest cities in the world. You know, for many years, Christian mission tended to focus on remote areas, focusing on islands and villages, but the world's population has shifted from agricultural to industrial and technological to digital, and the population has also shifted from rural to urban. Today's major cities are growing at a rapid rate. They represent millions of people in thousands of neighborhoods, and each neighborhood has its own unique character and people. In some, you'll find luxury condos. In others, immigrants struggling to make a living. Some are family neighborhoods. Others have more single people. Mission to the Cities calls on us to find creative ways to touch all these lives with the good news of Jesus Christ. If you live in a city, please find a way to be involved in positively impacting someone's life for Jesus. Pray that God will show you how you can help. If you'd like to learn more about Mission to the Cities, please visit missiontothecities.org. That's missiontothecities.org. And if you'd like to learn more about Adventist Mission around the world, visit our website at adventistmission.org. I'm Gary Krause, and thanks for joining us today. And I hope you'll join us next time right here on Global Mission Snapshots.